Hey guys, it's Johnny Five. On this video, we're gonna go over some of the basic differences on electric bike hub motors. Let's take a look. So the most common hub motors that you'll see on an e-bike are the gearless hub motor and the geared hub motor. So let's take a look at the gearless. So on the gearless, we have just a stator and just a rotor, and that is it. There's nothing really moving inside of this except the rotor and the two bearings. Um, the benefit of this is obviously that you have almost no moving parts and the downside to something like this is that you don't have torque multiplication going on because there's no planetary gear set on this. It's just a one-to-one -one ratio from the motor to your wheel and that is it. Um, so you end up losing torque and you do draw more amps when you're riding these um, going up hills or just under a heavy load. but. The huge benefit is obviously that there's almost no maintenance on it, so if that's what you're looking for, then this is the motor that you want to run. The geared hub motor has a planetary gear set inside, and what that does is it allows the motor to spin around five times faster than what your tire is doing. So that in turn gives the motor more torque, and it tends to draw less amps, especially when you're climbing a hill or just under a heavy load. The downside to this is there is obviously more moving parts. There is these three planetary gears that tend to wear out over time. But if you're looking for more torque on a hill to where you don't have to pedal so much, and um, if you're looking for a motor that takes usually less amps uh, to run, then this is the motor that you wanna run. So in some cases, and more often on a planetary gear set motor, you'll find what's called a sprag or a one-way roller clutch. And they put these in here because when you pedal your bike and you don't want to use a motor, this ends up slipping and freewheeling, much like your uh, freewheel on the back of your bike. And that allows for you to pedal without dragging the motor along, which is kind of nice. Obviously, the negative side of something like this is that it is another part that can fail. Um, but it's pretty uncommon. So on some of these motors, more often rare now than not, there's what's called a sensorless motor. And what that means is that there is no sensors on the stator to tell the speed controller where the positioning of the rotor is. And on those motors, the easiest way to know what, how to determine one of those is there's only three phase wires coming out of the motor and that is it. There's no sensor wires whatsoever. On a censored motor, you'll see three hall sensors in the stator. And what that does is tell the speed controller where the rotor is in conjunction to the stator. And those are easy to identify because it has the three phase wires coming out, plus an additional five smaller wires that is a positive and negative five volt uh, source. And then the three sensor wires for the, for the hall sensors inside. So that is it for this video. I hope that explained hub motors a little bit more in depth for you guys. Until next time, I'll see you later.